Hi there, um, welcome to the workshop again. Uh, when we last filmed, it was a great day for me. We actually got this little thing running. Uh, and bear in mind, it was a completely unknown quantity. I couldn't get it, get it running when I went to look at it. Uh, the guy told me not to bother, I didn't even try. Um, so look, last time we got it running. It was running a little bit rough. The revs would not die down. When you blip the throttle, it took a long time for it to return. I thought the slide was sticking. Uh, it turned out it wasn't that. So um, since then, uh, I've done a few more bits to it and I'll just give you a rundown of uh, what I've actually done. Uh, I fitted a new condenser um, and uh, we did the advance and retard mechanism. Now you, you've seen that already, but so a new condenser went on. I've put a new spark plug cap on. I think the one on there was a bit dicky. Uh, we've got two newer plugs uh, and I've actually got a half decent spark. It's not quite as good as I want, um, but I think it's there or thereabouts. Uh, and I also took the carb off again. I ultrasonically cleaned it again. Uh, but the main reason I did that is because um, uh, the float needle arrived. The, so the needle that shuts off the fuel when the fuel goes in the carb from the fuel tap, the level comes up in the float bowl uh, and the float floats on it and shuts that off so it's the right height. So I put a new float needle in. So, um, oh, and the other thing I've done, just to check we're not damaging it, um, I've checked the valve clearances. I took this rocker cover off and in there are the valves. Um, I did it while I was doing the timing because I had the plugs out anyway. Uh, and uh, they're a bit loose if anything, so that wouldn't do any harm, but I've set them to a factory tolerance of 0 0.05 of a millimetre. So inlet and exhaust valves are now set to the correct amount. So I've kind of been tinkering, nothing major. Haven't spent any more money on it really, uh, apart from the float needle. Uh, it came with a spare condenser and it was in a sealed Honda bag, so I think it was brand new. So I put that on uh, and the sparks do seem a bit better. I, th I think our running issue is a few things all being slightly out, coming together at once, like the overfueling, a weak spark. Uh, I was worried about a valve holding open, which it isn't. Um, uh, and I I've rechecked the timing and put a new condenser on. So in theory, this should run a bit better now. Now I've said that, I probably can't even get it going now I've had a fiddle. Um, I have kind of broken one of my golden rules really of only fiddle with one thing at a time. But I was delving in there and got carried away. I burnt the midnight oil. So all those major things, well not major, but tinkering around the edges things are done and it might just help a bit. So let's see, here we go. Uh, ignition on, uh, fuel on, let's see if it goes. is a whole world better than it was. So I'm really 
run away but before if I bred it, it would have kept running and it kind of runs away with you. I mean I'm an experienced rider, I just pull the clutch in and use the brakes. So really that is not ideal. I wouldn't be happy about road testing a bike with doing that. We've got all the lights and everything work up. Uh, this main beam, this the main beam warning light works. Well, that was a bit of a damp squib. I was ready for the off, and then at last knocking, doing my pre-flight check, uh, the rear brake light wasn't working. Obviously, you can't go out without a working rear brake light. So I've just been tinkering, oh, five minutes. Uh, I took the seat off, and sure enough, there was a connection that come undone under the seat. Um, I do need to pick through all the electrics on this, but we're just doing a you know, shakedown run. We're not gonna go far. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll keep going if we get it started in a minute. Um, so yeah, look, I've just uh, got the connector back together. We do have a rear brake light, uh, that's front brake light, sorry. Uh, rear brake light. Um, so look, I think we're ready to go. So this is truly an exciting moment for me, this rose tinted spectacles trip of mine. Haven't been one of these for 40 years. Uh, let's see how it shapes up. As you may have gathered, judging by what's around me here, uh, I was going to go out on my test ride and it was still missing on this right hand cylinder and uh, to be honest I got all my kit on, was about to go out the door uh, and it really started playing up. I wasn't happy to ride it to be honest so uh, I'm going to have to postpone my test ride even though I'm itching to do it. I could uh, if I really wanted to take it out but I'm really not going to gain anything. I really want this running a bit sweeter uh, before I road test it. I, I don't care if it's a, a bit lumpy, um, but this really, uh, it's not pleasant and I don't want to damage it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to run through the electric. As you can see, I've been um, trying to make the ignition work without the voltage regulator in. Uh, I've still got the electrics on. Um, but basically, just run through it again because I'm missing something obvious. I am going to do a compression check uh, if they're roughly okay, then I know I'm looking at carbon ignition. Um, but right now I'm standing here and I'll be honest, I haven't really got a clue what's wrong with it because I've done the carb, um, but it's a single carb. So why are the right hand cylinders playing up? It's either gonna be, these exhausts uh, aren't the same. Uh, this is a genuine Honda one. Uh, that one's an aftermarket one. That one feels a lot stronger, but is that because this cylinder is running so badly? It's the right hand cylinder I've got a problem with. That left hand one is as sweet as. So I am gonna do a compression check. If that checks out okay, then at least that reveals something to me that the actual basic engine is all right. But until I do that, I'm clutching at straws. So that's gonna be probably the next thing I do.